Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Jesus says, I give you my Holy Spirit to be with you. And my Spirit will lead you and guide you. He'll, he'll comfort you. Anyone need comfort at all? Never, right? We don't need that. Always. And he'll, he'll take you, he'll, he'll lead you in, in, into the things what God has for you. His Spirit is this. He's our teacher. And he's our helper. Our helper, the Bible says. A paraclete in the Greek. Para means with and cleat is the helper. One that comes alongside to be your helper through life. Anyone need a helper to get through this life? You have the Spirit of God offered to you as your helper. And Jesus said he wants to put his Spirit in you. You are the temple. He's not going to put it in a building made by human hands. He's going to put it into you. That way... The building can go wherever the assignment requires. If the Lord needs to use you to be a light to somebody, he needs them to know about, about his love and his grace and mercy. He goes, I'll just send the building, <laughs> my building, Aaron, over to see the one that he wants to share with. He doesn't have to bring them to some pilgrimage to some temple somewhere. He goes, I got portable temples. I'll send the temples to them. And he sends us in to help those people. And this is the beauty. He says, Paul says, don't you know? Do you not know? Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwells in you. The Spirit of God is given to dwell in you. Now, if any man destroys this temple, pay attention here. This is a pretty big warning. If you destroy what temple? temple? Your body. He says, then you need to know God will destroy that man. For the temple of God is holy. You know, this generation doesn't really have that. I, I, I don't know. I think the nuns drilled this into us. We knew. The, your body belongs to God. You've got to honor God with your body. You don't, hurt, you, you don't harm. I, did anyone else grow up getting that whipped into them besides me? I mean... I should, I've taught to them, <laughs> but it was whipped into us, okay? <laughs> so just, uh, this is the way it was. If you went to Catholic school, you know what I'm talking about. There's these little rulers, and if you're bad, you put your hand out. If you're really bad, they turn the ruler from the flat side to the, the sharp side. And those nuns were good. What the? You know? You, you went, I'm not doing that again. Because it, it hurt, you know? And they're like, don't you do that. You, and you didn't dare do something to hurt your body on purpose. Because they would tell you, your body is a temple. Your, yeah, they knew. And they knew to tell us as children. You know, it's really a good truth to learn as a child that your body is special to God. Because it changes your whole outlook. You know, you don't get all dysfunctional and weird about my body, you know, <laughs> not being a value or, no, you know... I have such low self-esteem. Forget it. I got great self-esteem. You know why? Because God said my body is valuable enough to him that he would put his spirit in it. He would call my body a temple, and if he would do that, then he, is he going to stick his spirit into a piece of junk? No. You are of value to God. I want you to know that so that you get the right kind of outlook about even your own body. That it's special to God. And he uses it in special ways. And the beauty of it is, now, I like, because if you read the New Testament, there's a lot of admonitions about God's spirit being with us, in us. We're told, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed until the day of redemption. You know, God put a, a seal on you that's like, this is my property. Sealed, my seal, he says, the Holy Spirit is his seal of approval. 
This one belongs to me. Sealed. Now, when I teach the kids about this, because it also teaches us to be filled, right, with the Holy Spirit. Like, with living water, it says that goes in and brings refreshment, and then what? Comes bubbling up like a an overflowing. It's not just a fill up like a container. It's filled till it bubbles up and overflows. It comes back out. I mean, we're to have this beautiful experience of God's Spirit coming in us, refreshing us, and just like water that goes and brings refreshment to, to you know, a lake, it'll do just fine as long as there's an outlet on the other side. Water coming in, then it, go, it brings life to all those things in the lake, and then it passes out the other side. But what happens when it's dammed up? I went over this before. If it only has intake and no output, there's a place called the Dead Sea, if you ever want to see this in real example on the earth. 400 feet below sea level, over there in Israel, south of En Gedi, it's, it's all the water from the Jordan flows into it, but nothing flows out. And you know what happens? It is called the Dead Sea for a reason. There is no life in it. It is dead. Well, we weren't created to be dead. You were not created to have God's Spirit flow into you only and then work like a dam and say, I got it. I'm going to hold it right here. Stays right here. Buck stops here. No, it doesn't. It just passes through here. You are a conduit for God's Holy Spirit. And when you allow God's Spirit to come into your life and then overflow and touch others, just like living water, it just brings life to you and then passes on and brings life to the ones that it passes to next. And we were created. Do you not know that you were called by God, His temple, for His Spirit? And he tells us, don't quench the Holy Spirit of God. I love this one. This is, a, this is one of the passages. It's not very far away from here. It's in, in Thessalonians. He says, uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5.19, he says, don't quench the Spirit of God. You are made for God's Spirit to bring power and life to. And you know, it's interesting because in the Bible we have two different analogies for the Holy Ghost. Living water and fire. Interesting, both of them are used as the fire part is for the power, you know, but he says don't put the fire out Don't don't you know don't like Cause it to be put out like you you, you douse a, 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 a Burning fire. He says let that fire burn and How many Christians do you know that when they first become a Christian they get really on fire? They even use that term. Oh, they're really on fire And then you see them a couple months later, and they're not so on fire or a couple years later. And you're like, weren't you really on fire? Oh yeah, I did that for a while. Well, what happened? Oh, I burned out. Or I got into sin. And sin put the fire out. It does. It puts it out, doesn't it? Chokes it out. You just don't do that. You're created to be this masterpiece of, of a living temple. Holy, set apart for God. And you're valuable to God. You are so valuable to him as a temple that he can send on assignment. Because, guys, each one of you has an opportunity to have God-ordained appointments. Ones that I can't have. Because I know that God has placed us all in different circles of, of influence. You know, Sam might be around someone I'm not around. Or, you know, he's got each one of us that, that he puts in those places where we get a chance to, to, to share God's life with others. And like Aaron said this morning, you know, you want to be a witness at all times. Witness means a showing of God. Use words, he says, only when necessary. In other words, live it first. You don't need to be doing this all the time. That's my job. <laughs> and <laughs> everyone thinks they do this all the time. Then they come to my house and I like, talk to my wife, she's like, he hasn't said anything for hours. Is something wrong with the pastor? <laughs> no, that's how he is the rest of the time. She says, I'm only funny on Sunday mornings for you guys. <laughs> rest of the time, I guess I'm a dud, but that's what she says, so. She said it's right. She, she said it's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lord. <laughs> you know, honestly, I, 
I want to be the pastor that says, not do as I say. I want to be the one who says, you want to know how to do it? Just copy me. I'll show you. Do it as I do. Just like Paul said, don't know how to follow the Lord? Be an imitator of me. As I am an imitator, who do you say? Of Jesus. And eventually, you won't even need Paul, because Paul's the guy who just finished excusing himself, saying, I'm nothing. Who's, who's the point go to? Jesus. If you need to know how to do it, you can copy me as long as you need, but eventually you're going to figure out, I become unnecessary real quick. Because you'll, you'll catch on to, I'm only copying the Lord. And pretty soon you'll be like looking over my head going, hey, I'll just copy him straight. There you go. All of us Christians should be able to do that, though. We should all be able to say to someone, Richard might be around someone, you know, in, the, in his circle of influence, and they're going, I don't know how to do this Jesus thing. And he goes, okay, just copy me for a while. I'll get you the, you know, because we do learn well by example. But are you setting a good example? What if someone came to you, they're brand new, got, they became a Christian yesterday, the baby Christian. They go, I don't know what to do. I don't know anything about this. How do I do it? Could you say to them, no problem, follow me. Just copy everything I do. Everything I do. <laughs> or would you be selective? You can copy me on certain hours w in, when I'm on my good behavior. I don't want you copying me when I'm on my downtime. <laughs> see, I've seen some of you Christians. You got like this, this thing like you're all good on Sunday morning <laughs> till you get to the parking lot <laughs> and someone pulls in front of you and you lose your Christianity. <laughs> Jesus departed the building. They just got over there. What's up with that? We're supposed to be able to say, copy me all the time as I copy the Lord. And if you can't do that, if there's something comes to mind, well, I wouldn't want them to copy this, you just identified sin in your life. You just put your finger on the areas you need to repent of and you need to let go of. Because they're not doing you any favors. If, you have to, if, you, if there's something you have to hide so they wouldn't see, because it's not proper before God, then you know there's your, there's your areas to work on. And if you want to get good at it really in a hurry, I've already told you the secret. Start teaching youth. Yeah. Work with the kids over there. They'll bust you so fast. <laughs> you use one swear word, you're in trouble. My mama wouldn't like it if you said that. Or you say something off color, or you do something wrong, they let you know. I don't think Jesus would do that. And they're right. Jesus wouldn't do it. So I have room to grow. And so do all of us. But if we use this, we can grow. And the Holy Spirit will be there with you and he'll help you grow. And he will bring to your remembrance everything the Lord has ever spoken by his spirit to you. You know, sometimes we just need that little gentle voice reminding us, going, it's going to be okay. I'm with you. Don't worry. I got you. You know, how many times does the Holy Spirit have to remind us of that? Yeah. Often, right? We're going through stuff, just this life, and we're like, the Lord goes, don't worry. I'm with you. I'm with you. And that's what I want to remind you of today. You're a temple of the Holy Ghost. Don't worry. He's with you. Now, he might tell you to do something. seems impossible. But if your focus is on Jesus, you can even do impossible. And you don't have to worry about it. He'll get you through it. Next week, we'll come back to this. We just got a couple verses to finish it up, and then we'll go into chapter 4. So if you want to read ahead, you'll know where we're going as we continue. And on, on Tuesday night, we're doing Colossians in chapters 3 and 4. We're, it's weird. We're First Corinthians 3 and 4 and Colossians 3 and 4 at the same time. But they are sweet books to study side by side. They, they overlap nicely on different things and um, really good for your face. So if you're needing a little extra encouragement in the week, we're on the ground floor 
You come into the Regency Retirement Home, you pass through the lobby area, there's these sliding automatic doors to get in the lobby, and then at the back there's sliding automatic doors to get you into the pool area. And there's a big uh, area where they play bingo and have all their social events, and that's where they've asked us to do the study so that people in wheelchairs and stuff can come rolling up and be with us. So come out for that on Tuesday night at 6.30. I have to be done by 8 because the old ones go like this. Look what they're out, man. So I if you're worried about me going over, I don't. It's just it's not even a thing. So I was even done at 7.40 this week. It shocked everyone. They were like, oh, what are we going to do? He's done. But um, it's been a really encouraging time in the Word. So come out for that and, uh, and get encouraged. Kids, we got the Friday night youth group for them at the house. And uh, had a good time with them this week. So have about learning about why do, we, why do we have morning devotions? Why do we seek the Lord in the morning? And we learned about Psalm 5. It's on our song sheet. Maybe we'll close with that. It's called, Give Ear to My Words, O Lord. And uh, if, you, if you ask him to give ear, you're, you're asking God, God, could you hear? Give me your ear to, my, to what I have. I, I got a prayer. Does God hear our prayers? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much that you are a God who hears. A God who, who hears our prayers and answers, Lord, even in ways that are way beyond what we could have thought up. Thank you for your kindness. We just ask that as we go from here, your spirit would give us what we need. Let us be able to hearken to that, that still small voice when your spirit whispers to us what to do. May we be the people who have an ear to hear what your spirit says. And may we be a people with an obedient heart to do what you say. Help us, Lord. I ask that in Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said? Amen. Amen. Would you guys stand with me listening to a closing song? Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.